So you're thinking about a move to Jersey City, or perhaps you're already here and you're thinking about a potential move somewhere in the city or you have to relocate to a different area. Today's episode, we're gonna focus on two neighborhoods right here in downtown. We're gonna take a look at the village and we're gonna take a look at Hamilton Park. So if you wanna get more information, stay tuned. Welcome to New Jersey Living. If you're interested in learning all there is to know about moving to New Jersey, or perhaps if you already own here and are considering a move to another location, click sub subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated on all the episodes that I produce in this channel. We specifically focus on areas of North Jersey that are within a 25 to 30 mile radius of New York City, mostly suburbs of New York. My name is Corey Jones, and I'm a real estate agent with Compass Real Estate. I receive emails, text calls from folks just like you looking to make a move to here in Jersey or looking to make a move out of Jersey to a different area, if not a different region. Please give me a call. My contact information is in the details below, whether you're looking to make a move within the next few weeks or perhaps the next few months. I would love to be able to assist with insights that I have both on the state and just the general marketing of a property, purchasing process of a property, the transition of relocating from one place to another. I would love to share that expertise with you. So be sure again to subscribe to the channel and let's get to the next episode now. We'll start the Village and Hamilton Park episode right here in the plaza of Grove Street Station, the PATH station. Right behind me you can see the PATH station entrance and I will pan around just so you get an idea and a general feel of the festivities that take place in the plaza. Right now there is a lot of open space but you can see that there is setup of uh, tents and little kiosks going on. The um, weekend site, right now it's a Friday afternoon, but the weekend site here um, is full of vendors, um, events. It's very much a uh, central social scene in the downtown area. So we're gonna take a walk through, although we are not quite in the nearest, uh, the first stop, I'm sorry, will be the village. We're not in the village right now, we'll walk that direction. Uh, but this right here is the section of town that is prime for real estate purposes because of this station right here. Grove Street has both the 33rd Street path that goes to Midtown and the Wall Street path that goes to the downtown financial district of Manhattan. So this uh, station provides two access to two different trains going into Manhattan, which makes it a, uh, a very much appeal in terms of convenience for those commuters that are uh, traveling to either des destination for work every day. So we're gonna take a first stop in one of the featured dining scenes downtown. I'll see you there. Well, about a half block away from the train station now, um, in a section that is really called Harismus Cove. But if you say Harismus Cove around Jersey City, not too many people are gonna know what you're referring to. Uh, this is a uh, uh, shut down, uh, the streets are shut down the vehicle traffic. The vehicles that you see right here are uh, mostly uh, construction or delivery or maintenance of some kind that are working within um, one of these establishments. You can see I'm directly across from the Ashford, which is one of the dining spots really close to the train station. I'm gonna pan up a little so that you can see that there's a rooftop dining, uh, th this particular establishment. Along this stretch, it's about a two block stretch, uh, recently paved road, as you can see here. So this is all recent work done by the city. Uh, there's dining, uh, there's retail, um, there's even a um, early childhood uh, development. Uh, okay, well, you can see that right behind me, right here. Uh, so pharmacy, there's a produce market. So this type of area, as you could imagine in the summertime and on the weekend is uh, full of activity. Many uh, occasions there'll be seating right here in the street area where people are dining openly. It's uh, relatively quiet right now on a weekday afternoon. Uh, so this is part of Newark Ave that leads all the way down into the village, which we will be in just a few more uh, minutes as I make my way down that way. All right, on our first stop on the village section of the tour, we're at the corner of 2nd and Coles. Coles, the light behind 
me that you can see just a block down. That is Newark Ave. And as I said, I mentioned earlier, Newark Ave pretty much cuts directly through the Journal Square section of Jersey City all the way into the downtown section straight through the village. Technically, the village is a little further uh, west from here, but in a general sense of describing neighborhoods, this would be recognized as a section of a villi the village. Um, uh, one property that, um, first property we're gonna stop by here is directly across the street. So I'm gonna pan around. I'm gonna pan also for, uh, you get a look at um, the establishment right here in front of me, give you an idea of what is uh, the general kind of, um, I don't wanna say infrastructure, but the, the general vibe of the neighborhoods. It's a lot similar to what you've seen. And if you've seen my Hoboken episode, if you've seen my um, episode with Paulus Hook and uh, Newport, uh, you'll see that there is often on each corner some type of either eating establishment, maybe a cleaners, uh, maybe a cafe. Uh, you'll see that here in the village as well. Uh, so you see a little interesting uh, artwork right here um, on the side of the building that certainly is a discouraging factor for uh, graffiti. Directly across what you see, the brown building is 39 Coles. That is a two family property. Uh, one unit, four bedroom, three bath. The other unit, three bed, two bath. Recently sold at 2.4 million. Uh, it gives you an idea of what kind of uh, demand is in this area. We are from where we started at Grove Street Station. This would be probably, depending on how rapid a walker you are, five to eight minute walk to the Grove Street Station, which makes this such a prime area uh, for real estate purposes. Um, so we're gonna continue to go a little further into what's at the heart of the village, but uh, just taking a little bit of a step down this block, you can see many of the buildings are certainly pre-war in age, not a uh, true brownstone of what you uh, often think about, but the, this is the general style of the properties. Some are, like we just saw with 39, are multi-family properties. Some are single family. Others are cut up into individual, uh, either apartments or condos. Um, so very much like uh, Apollos Hook and Hoboken, you're gonna find mostly three, four level uh, buildings that are cut up into smaller um, condos or something that's owned outright as a single family or multifamily. It's the waterfront section like we saw at Newport that has the towering buildings with hundreds of units and obviously there's a lot more inventory uh, that is uh, bought and sold in those areas as well compared to these other areas like the village. So our next step uh, will be a little further into what is at the heart of the village and you'll be able to see uh, you know, kind of what's reflective of that true village scene. So I'll see you there. Here we are at the corner of Fifth Street and Newark Ave. We are at the very northern end of Newark Ave as it pertains to downtown in the village area. If you look behind me up the hill, you can see uh, the buildings that are currently in Journal Square. Um, there's the one completed building and there's more being built up around it. Uh, and that, of course, like I just mentioned, is Journal Square. Directly behind me, you see a newer building and this is Definitely reflective of what is taking place throughout the city. Uh, you definitely see uh, a few of these uh, in the village area downtown. Uh, I'm gonna pan around a little bit just across the street. There is a newer building kind of sandwiched in between two older ones. So right here, condos are still being sold here in this building, the unit here just sold at 590 listed at 599 sold at 590 one bedroom one bath slightly over 700 square feet 711 square feet so pretty pretty good size uh the hoa is here 345 which are very reasonable um and from a commute standpoint from here someone commuting from here hits the street right here and walks all the way down jersey ave to the Grove Street Station, which is probably, 
I'd say roughly about a 12 minute walk from where we are right now. Um, directly beside it, I wanted to point out as well, there's some new construction in terms of these kind of uh, brownstone style new builds that you can see right here directly beside two car garage, three level. So it gives you a, just again an idea of the renewal uh, that is taking place throughout uh, downtown Jersey City. So we're going to hop over uh, to Second Street, give one clarification. The last spot that we were at on Fifth is actually a listing. It was not sold yet, but is currently listed at uh, 2.399 to be exact uh, million. Uh, the inventory is certainly a lot smaller. So I like to, as you all know who've seen my episodes, focus on uh, sold property so you can see exactly what they were listed for, what they sold for, and within the past 30 days um, of the actual filming. Um, in this case, uh, I have a little bit of a mix, so I'll keep you posted as to whether it was, it is active or sold. In this case, uh, it's a sold unit. So we'll see uh, one more stop over here in the village section before we start our next part of the journey in Hamilton Park. I'll see you there. We're at our final stop here in the village, and this is, in my opinion, like the quintessential village scene in terms of how the streets are. I'm gonna step into a street just a minute. Uh, streets aren't too busy, as you can see, on side streets. When I pan around, Brunswick Street is behind me. Uh, that is a relatively frequented thoroughfare going back and forth, north and south, uh, uh, between Newark Ave and uh, Columbia, uh, Columbia, uh, Columbus. So behind me is, we see the 396. Um, this is the single family, which you don't see many of. Uh, and in this case has a garage. And I'm trying to get a little closer over here without having any traffic issues. So with the garage, list price on this was 1.299, basically 1.3, sold at 1.35. Um, Distance from path, uh, we are talking probably 10 to 12 minutes in terms of a trip. Now I'm gonna pan across the street just to give you a feel for what the other properties, this is an entire row, entire stretch, will go just the same pattern of properties down the street and towards the end of the street, both on second and uh, uh, the next couple streets there are some newer buildings newer developments uh, that are down towards that end with newer units that are a bit larger and obviously have more upgraded um, amenities this right here is an example of a property that no doubt was renovated um, and again not very common down here this is a, a scenario where there's actually two other properties that are listed one seems to be pending. I think both may be under contract at this point in time, uh, but it's not uh, very easy to get a sizable single family uh, in the neighborhood. So we're going to uh, take a little drive through just to get some more driving scenes to get a visual of some of these streets that are right in the heart of the village. And then we're gonna take our next uh, stop at Hamilton Park. See you there. All right, we're now in Hamilton Park. We are standing in front of McNair High School. This is certainly one of what I would consider one of the three crown jewels of the Jersey City public school system. So McNair, along with Infinity Institute and uh, PS16, which is Bradford Elementary, if you've seen my episode on Paulus Hook in Newport, uh, you've already seen that, that school as well. So these are all very high performing schools. McNair is A plus rated. If you were to look at uh, greatschools.com, uh, niche.com, the uh, ratings are exceptionally high. This is a magnet school. Along with Infinity Institute, these, uh, they're one of, they're two of the uh, magnet high schools in town. So students uh, 
certainly have to meet a certain academic profile. Uh, and even beyond that, there's an additional admissions criteria because this particular uh, school only has enrollment of roughly about 700. Um, so as you can imagine, a city the size of Jersey City, which is a you know, relatively large city by uh, New Jersey standards, uh, it's not uh, a substantial number that could uh, you know, enroll every student uh, that is extremely high, highly performing. So it is uh, a difficult place to uh, get admissions to, but uh, an exceptional school, school that pulls from the entire population. This is not exclusive to uh, the downtown population. This is throughout the entire town. Um, so we're gonna take a look at a couple properties right here uh, in the neighborhood and to give you a feel for what we're uh, going to experience here uh, in this given location and stick around towards the end where we're actually in the park itself, which is um, one of the, I, I would say, one of the feature scenes of the downtown area. So stick around for that. I'll see you at the next stop. We're at our first property stop here in Hamilton Park. We're on Coles uh, Street between Pavonia and 9th Street. Um, which we just pan around so you can see the surroundings. Everything that we see here is uh, a brownstone, right? So that is a lot of what you see around Hamilton Park, which um, it just adds to the aesthetic of the general area. So behind me, 163.5, 163 and a half is a single family. So this unit is not cut up into different condos. It is five bedroom, two bath, it is active. Uh, so this is on the market. Um, so as I referenced earlier, uh, the inventory is certainly lower in these uh, communities, these smaller communities. So I pull in some actives as well. 1.375 million for this one. Again, five bedroom and two bath. And um, again, just reinforcing the general feel of, of the area. This is not a very convenient walk to Grove Street. This is more of a location that is featured by the aesthetics of the neighborhood and we are one block away. And I mean, literally one block around the corner, Hamilton Park is right there, which we're gonna feature in just a few moments. Uh, and as I pan back, there is, uh, you can see again, there's always a, a pub or restaurant, cafe at each corner. And you can see the one directly behind me right there on the corner of 9th and, and Coles. All right, so we're going to take a journey over to our next stop. I'll see you there. Our second Hamilton Park property is going to be for the Bargain Hunters. This is a building behind me right here to uh, 16 9th Street. We are literally half a block down from Hamilton Park. Uh, the unit is a one bedroom, was slightly over 800 square feet HOA is only 165 sold at 622 list price I believe was 595 or 599 it'll be flashed up here anyway uh, but it was a bargain relatively towards uh, to you consider what you would get in Hoboken or on the waterfront in terms of square footage uh, this is most certainly a bargain fully renovated all right so renovated unit, unit steps from the park of course Hamilton Park, the inconveniences, you're not right there beside a um, path station, right? So your, your walk from here is going to be more towards like maybe a 20 minute walk um, or Uber. Uh, but the neighborhood uh, aesthetic, the neighborhood feel is a lot different even from that of the village. So this is uh, because of the park and uh, the nature of the property surrounding the park gives a very different feel uh, than other areas. Uh, in both uh, the village and, and the waterfront for that matter. Um, so this again is something that just uh, reflects how just a different search parameter in a different neighborhood can yield a different result. Because again, over 800 uh, square feet, newly renovated, you'd be hard pressed in a location like Hoboken or the waterfront, or even Paula's Hook for that matter, uh, to find something at 622. All right. Um, so we've got one more stop uh, in terms of property feature. And again, stick around. You're going to want to see the park scene. I'm going to have a few scenes in the park itself to see that it has something to offer for everyone. See you there. We're at our final stop here in Hamilton Park. We're at 333 7th Street. And this, what you see behind me, is uh, 
your row home style uh, of dwelling, fully renovated, single family, three bedroom, two bath, and it is active, so not sold yet. This is actively listed at 999. Um, factor that does come into play with uh, list price, whether it goes above, beyond, often is parking, as we can see in this scenario right here. There's not parking in front, sometimes there is off-site parking, so I'm gonna walk over in this direction a little bit because I do see a driveway, and I will take a look at the listing to see if there is maybe, potentially, <clears throat> parking that's assigned. Uh, and it seems to be the other building, so I would say no. All right, so this, uh, again, is an example of having a single family dwelling where you can occupy all levels from top to bottom. This is a three levels. You can probably see there is a basement level entrance there, and then you have two levels above. Uh, there are occasions where someone may have that as an independent space, a studio um, that they could potentially rent, kind of off the books kind of thing. Um, but more likely than not, it's going to be used as kind of a uh, basement space for the entertainment office, if not storage. So um, this is, uh, again, another <clears throat> example of single, single family dwellings or multifamily dwellings, obviously drawing a higher price point than what your condo is going to be because it's going to give you greater uh, square footage. So we have one more stop, and that is going to be at Hamilton Park just to get a little feel for both the park itself and the surrounding area. All right, we're here at the Hamilton Park scene um, at the entrance of the park. I'm gonna have a walkthrough and I'm just gonna flip the camera around and just to, you'll hear audio, but you won't see me just so I can kind of feature different areas and uh, different features to the park itself. All right, join me. First step into the park from the side where I am. I am at the uh, northeast corner of the park. You see where I just came from, your surrounding buildings. There are some newer buildings here. And then you can see some of the older ones, including uh, St. Michael's uh, Roman Catholic Church here. So there is basketball. It is a Friday afternoon, so kids are out of school. So both the young kids and older are out here. Basketball court over here. You can see tennis courts here. These uh, newer buildings, uh, generally they are retail on the first level. Um, I think that bookstore right there on the corner. Um, there is a childcare facility down here as well. Uh, you find that throughout you know, any neighborhood because there are a lot of families with uh, young children uh, throughout the downtown scene, no matter what neighborhood you're in. All right, so we're gonna keep going on the stroll and we're gonna get a few more clips of what else the park has to offer. All right, we have a dog park on one side of the paved parkway, or walkway, I should say, and your cool down sprinkler park here for the little ones on the other side. Center of the park is a gazebo and opposite the sprinkler is the playground for, again, the little ones. Interesting facet here at Hamilton Park. You have the small breed run for your little dogs and then you have the log, uh, large breed dog run for your larger. So uh, just like for humans, there's something for everyone's taste with the dog population as well. And on the southern end of the park are open areas. There's a fountain right in the middle of the uh, walkway facing that direction and open just area for whatever recreational activity for the other end of the park. I thought I'd try to get a concluding scene with the juggling act that's going on behind me. It seems that there's a birthday party in the far distance and maybe the juggling act which just stopped I see was uh, a part of that perhaps. So I hope you enjoyed our Hamilton Park and Village episode today. So again, if you uh, wanna stay updated on all the neighborhoods and all of the, eventually we're gonna get more into some of the social events and eating scenes as well. 
uh, but we're focusing more on the neighborhoods in general right now with uh, New Jersey Living episodes. But if you are enjoying the episodes, please do subscribe. Click the notif notification bell uh, to stay updated on upcoming episodes that are going to be released right now. They're being released weekly, one a week, and we are soon to be on schedule for two releases for each week. So stay tuned, and I'll see you on the next trip. Thank you.